The Giant and the Tailor A certain tailor, who was great at boasting, but ill at doing, took it into his head to go abroad for a while and look about the world, as soon as he could manage it. He left his workshop and wandered on his way over hill and dale, sometimes hither, sometimes thither, but ever on and on. Once, when he was out, he perceived in the di blue distance a steep hill, and behind it a tower reaching to the clouds, which rose up out of the wild, dark forest. Thunder and lightning, cried the tailor. What is that? And as he was strongly goaded by curiosity, he went boldly towards it. But what made the tailor open his eyes and mouth when he came near it was to see that the tower had legs, and leapt in one bound over the steep hill, and was now standing as an all-powerful giant before him. What dost thou want here, thou tiny fly's leg? cried the giant, with a voice as if it were thundering on every side. The tailor whimpered, I want just to look about and see if I can earn a bit of bread for myself in this forest. If thou, if that is what thou art after, said the giant, thou mayest have a place with me. If it must be, why not? What wages shall I receive? Thou shalt hear what wages thou shalt have every year three hundred and sixty-five days, and when it is a leap here, one more into the bargain. Does that suit thee? All right, replied the tailor, and thought in his own mind, man must cut his coat according to his cloth. I will try to get away as fast as I can. On this the giant said to him, Go, little ragamuffin, and fetch me a jug of water. Had I not better bring the well itself at once, and the spring too? asked the boaster, and went with the pitcher to the water. What? The well? And the spring too? growled the giant in his beard, for he was rather clownish and stupid, and began to be afraid. That knave is not a fool. He has a wizard in his body. Be on guard, old Hans. This is no serving man for thee. When the tailor had brought the water, the giant bid him go into the forest, and cut a couple of blocks of wood and bring them back. Why not the whole forest at once, with one stroke, the whole forest, young and old, with all that is there, both rough and smooth, asked the little tailor, and went to cut the wood. What? The whole forest, young and old, with all that is there, both rough and smooth, and the well and its spring too? growled the credulous giant in his beard, and was still more terrified. The knave can do much more than bake apples, and as a wizard in his body, be on thy guard, old Hans, this is no serving man for thee. When the tailor had brought the wood, the giant, the giant commanded him to shoot two or three wild boars for supper. Why not rather a thousand at one shoot, and bring them all here? inquired the ostentatious tailor. What? cried the timid giant in great terror. Let well alone tonight and lie down to rest. The giant was so terribly alarmed that he could not close an eye all night long for thinking what would be the best way to get rid of this accursed sorcerer of a ser servant. Time brings cou counsel. Next morning, the giant and the tailor went to a marsh, round which stood a number of willow trees. Then said the giant, Hark thee, tailor, set thyself on one of the willow branches. I long of all things to see if thou art big enough to bend it down. All at once the tailor was sitting on it, holding his breath and making himself so heavy that the bow bent down. When, however, he was compelled to draw breath, it hurried him, for unfortunately he had not put his goose in his pocket so high into the air that he never was seen again and this is the this to the great delight of the giant if the tailor had not fallen down again he must be hovering about in the air